you can't really get rid of the grease. Yeah, once once there's popcorn in something, that's pretty much the it's end of it. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I can still use it as a trash can. Yeah. yeah. It's good. We're talking about my The Batman special 14.99 uh popcorn <laughs> uh what would, what would you call it? Like popcorn tin, popcorn bowl. Yeah. Cup? Cup? It's not really I a mean, it's it's, not, it's it's a really big cup. It's not a cup <laughs> or a bowl. <laughs> What would you call it? There's a, there's a word for it. Y- you know what we mean. It eludes me. But <laughs> I'm using it as like a little mini trash can next to my animation desk. So, you know, as I'm animating, I have to throw things away. And I don't always want to have to get up and walk over to the trash can every time. You know, it kind of takes you out of the zone. Yeah, totally. The danger zone. Mm-hmm. Highway to the danger zone. So what do we got today for the people? Okay, well, last night we watched The Bachelor, part one of the season finale. We haven't watched part two yet because it came out for us on Hulu at like 4 a.m. last night. And um, I'm always like really tired around 4 a.m. And we had a midwife appointment this morning. So we only watched part one, but it was pretty crazy. Um... I have some, like, I feel like unpopular opinions about it. I don't know. Maybe it's not unpopular. Maybe, like, I just, like, the people I follow on, like, Instagram and, like, TikTok and, you know, like, you know, have the unpopular opinion. I don't know. Yeah, I think they're just toxic. (laughs) And you're you're the least toxic one out of all of them. I guess, like, and yeah, like, they have, like, a live studio. I love the word toxic. I know. (laughs) It's, like, my favorite word. I know. It's such, like, a, it's such a good word to describe things. Yeah, like, anything you don't like. (laughs) Toxic. (laughs) That's toxic. (laughs) Like, irrevocable, it's, like, irrevocable. Like, you can't fix it. Like, like, once something's toxic, it's, like, it's basically, like, um, like, it's, like, our version of, like, uh, when the Scientologists, you know, declare someone, like, an SP. Yeah. It's, like, it's, like, yeah, like, the secular SP. Yeah, it's toxic. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. <laughs> um, but yeah, like they had a live studio audience in this Bachelor episode. And I honestly like hated this, that part. Like I was not about it. Like I wanted it to just be like a regular episode because they would, ke- they kept cutting back to like the live studio audience and freaking like Jesse. Is that his name? Like yeah. the, the new host. Jesse Thunderguns. <laughs> like I, like I, I don't usually like hate him but like in this episode i was just like oh my god like shut up i was literally like grabbing the remote and like skipping all his parts with like the live the most explosive (laughs) bachelor season yet yeah and like it's like he's like advertising like the bachelor like we're already watching yeah it's like we're here like we we like you know we we made it yeah exactly like we made it this far like yeah um the most shocking (laughs) season ever committed to film yeah literally and so like you won't believe what happens in this episode. And they kept, like, during the the actual show, like, you know, like, the good part of the show, they had, like, a little screen in the corner, in, like, the bottom left corner of this, like, live studio audience, like, reactions. Like, one, like, chick at a time. And, <laughs> and like, I don't know, judging by their reactions and judging by what, like, everyone was saying or like how they looked like everyone hates Clayton basically everyone thinks Clayton's like a huge moron (laughs) like and even like Clayton's parents like Clayton's like mom and dad were there and like they were even like you know like giving him a hard time and like not on his side and I was just like I felt like I was like what like what is wrong with me like I just like don't like see like what Clayton did that was like so like egregious. Like well, I for don't people know. Who aren't watching The Bachelor? Maybe you should give them a little. Rundown. All right, all right. Yeah, you're right. So basically, at the okay, so towards the end of The Bachelor, when there's like three contestants left. So if it's The Bachelor, it's like three women. But if it's The Bachelorette, it's like you know like three guys. 
<laughs> but it's The Bachelor. So they had th- there's three girls left. And you have, they do this thing like overnight dates. And that's like called like fantasy suites or whatever. <laughs> and um, so Clayton, he goes on his first two fantasy suite dates. And he, you know, like fucks them both. And then he told both of them that he, like, loves them. <laughs> and, um, all right. And then on his third one, like, before they even, like, get to, like, the bedroom time or whatever, she's like, you know, if you, like, fucked these other two girls or, like, one of them or told anybody else that you love them, like, you know, I can't continue forward like with you like I'm done like I need to leave and so like it she leaves and it's like this big like dramatic you know they have like kind of like an argument like you know he like is apologizing to her and he's like well if I knew like how you felt about that like I wouldn't have done it and like all this stuff or whatever and like and then so basically like the next episode he like tells these two women who are left like he's like just honest with them about the situation and he's like yeah um you know I fucked both of you (laughs) and like I am feeling like I'm in love with both of you like right now um and he was like yeah I also am love with like in love with Susie like the one who went home how can I love three women at once I don't know (laughs) But I, but I do. And, you know, they all, like, they freak out. Like, the two girls, like, they, they're crying. It's, like, this big, like, dramatic thing. And, like, I don't know. Like, I the just. The rose ceremony from hell. And, yeah, that's what, that's what Jesse called it. The rose ceremony from hell. <laughs> and then, like. Are you ready? So, you know, if you're just listening to this and, like, you don't watch The Bachelor or, like. Okay, in any sort of, like, normal situation. Like, this is, that's completely valid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't want the person that you're in love with, like, you know, possibly going and getting engaged to, you know, sleeping with other people and telling other women that he loves them and stuff. But, like, I just feel like they don't, like, realize, or, like, they forgot that, like, they literally signed up to be, like, on The Bachelor. And, like, that's kind of, like, the whole, this is, like, the whole point of the show And, like, that's, like, the whole point of, like, these, like, overnight dates is to, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of, like, and I was just, like, I just feel like Clayton is just kind of, like, you know, I don't know Clayton. Like, I don't know his intentions. I can't read his brain, his mind. But, like, to me, it just kind of seems like Clayton just, like, does what he wants, like, in the moment and, like, goes with his heart. And, you know, in he, like... Yeah, I don't know. I just, like, don't think he is, like, so in the wrong. And, like, I, I just, I'm just confused why everybody is, like, beating up on him and, like, hates him. I <laughs> I guess what they expected him to do would just be to wait to say he loves you until after the engagement, after he makes his choice. But, like, they also, like, wanted him to, like, say that they loved him before that or loved them before that. So, yeah, it's kind of, like, confusing and it's not a normal situation. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, they should cut him a little bit of slack. Yeah, that's how I feel like. Just Jeez. kind of like, yeah, like sympathize with his position, I feel like. And like, like the situation. You're on, you're on a show. In. You're on the, you're on The Bachelor. Like, this is how it goes. Yeah. And like that one, the one girl that left, like Susie, like I've seen lots of people saying like, oh, I'm so proud of Susie for standing up for herself. And it's like, yeah, like I'm glad that if like she kind of realized that this wasn't what she wanted and like she doesn't want to be on the show anymore and she feels bad and like weird about it like yeah she should leave but it's also just like it's not Clayton's like fault (laughs) like I don't know that like she felt so weird about it yeah his dad was like you screwed the pooch son (laughs) yeah like I was so I felt so bad for him like his own parents were like giving him a hard time about it yeah I just don't really know (laughs) what he was supposed to do I guess he was just supposed to lie or just or just not tell them that he loved them I don't know. I, I feel like falling in love with someone's pretty easy. Like, that's the easy part yeah, of, a, of right? a relationship. It's like telling someone you love them is a big deal, but it's not like the biggest deal. Like, the bigger deal is like proposing. Yeah. Or like marrying yeah, that's the person. Like the kind of like or like being in a committed relationship. Like, you're my girlfriend. We're in a committed, you know, uh, monogamous relationship now. Yeah. Like, that's more of a big deal than just saying I love you. Yeah. Like, because it's like right now, like, 
you're he's in the kind of like the first stage of our relationship with all of them right with which is kind of like the infatuation period exactly and yeah like that's so yeah it's like i feel like it's very possible to like feel that way about like more than one person given this like situation that they're in they just place like a lot of emphasis on like the i love you thing Uh it's like and then like the lead up to that is like i think i'm falling in love with you and they're like (laughs) i can't believe he told me that he thinks he might be falling in love with me it's yeah. like, uh, okay, like, that's not that... And then he's like, I can't believe he would tell another woman that he loves her. It's like, I love a lot of people. I, I could love, like, the, the homeless guy on the street. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, for me, personally, it's like saying you love someone, you know, in a romantic context, it, does, it doesn't It does mean nothing, but it is it, it is important. But uh, I you're on The Bachelor. Like, you got to cut him a little bit of slack. They're, they're, a, they're acting like he, like, uh, proposed to every, each one of them or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, weir- it's weird how they're acting. I just feel like if they like loved clayton yeah they would be like sympathetic to his position and kind of like you know realize that they literally signed up for this and then yeah they were saying like oh like i don't want to be like you know like first second or third pick and it's kind of just like well then why did you go on the bachelor like i don't know i feel like they like go on this show and they think that like he's just gonna choose like one of them like at the very beginning and like the whole season's gonna be canceled or something like i don't know <laughs> yeah I, I feel like they're kind of like missing the forest for the trees yeah it's kind of a situation where it's like this isn't really like the big deal like you know it's more about like yeah your relationship with clayton and like he's like gonna be your future husband like don't get hung up on like the little details along the way just like go along for the ride and if he chooses you he chooses you yeah i don't know like they're just thinking they're like overthinking it yeah and then at one point like w- another one of the girls like was said that she was gonna go home or said she was going home and then like the one who was left it's like you won and then she was like upset about that like she was like not happy and she's like well like you know now it's like oh like she left so i'm the only one here so that's why he chose me and it's just kind of like you just can't like think about it like that i don't know it's more like you know you're the one who like like loves him the most you know right. too so yeah i guess she just wanted to be picked like she wanted him to her she wanted herself to be the first choice you know yeah. like Susie left and then it's like oh like did he love her more and then gabby left and then she's like oh like maybe i'm like the third one or the second one like yeah and he just wasn't and now he's just like stuck with me so i, I can definitely sympathize with her in that respect but it's also like yeah like this was the whole point yeah it, the thing was to, like, is win is the like, show like, like win clayton yeah like the, the the thing is is like all of these like reactions and feelings you know make total sense and but i just don't like i just feel like it's like you you're on the bachelor like i don't know like what did you expect kind it's of just thing. such trash it's just a, <laughs> such, such a horrible trash like premise of for a show i don't know like bachelor nation has never <laughs> been shooketh like this before yeah um so we yeah. still have one more episode left still and it looks crazy episode. there's still two girls on the show he, yeah he, clayton you know followed gabby down he's like gabby you know like just come on like stick around meet my family like I still want you here. And then right at the end, she's like, okay, I'll, I'll stay here. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> right at the end, he's like, actually, I think I love Susie the most. And I'm just, like, regretting everything. And I'm so broken. And, uh, oh, she's still in Iceland? Like, let's hit her up. Yeah, I think I think what's either going to happen is, like, because at this point, he has said, like, multiple times that he, like, loves Susie, like, the most. The most shocking conclusion in Bachelor history. And she was the one who, like, left, like, before they even, like, fucked or whatever. Like, it was just, like, too much for her. Like, the thought that he was, like, he fucked these other two girls or whatever. And so, like, um, yeah, like. They act like uh, you're going to need, like, an antidepressant or some sort of, like, like medically induced coma to, like, you know, get through, like, the the side effects of this show. Like, it, it, like. <laughs> They're like they're, they're talking about this finale like it's like going to rock your fucking <laughs> world. Like you're you're going to you're going you're going to need to like, you know, take the day off work the next day or yeah. like for like the next week or so cuz like it's it's going to affect you so much. But it's like it's just like a shitty reality show. Like who yeah. cares, you know? Yeah. But like I guess people are like super into it. I don't know. Yeah, I they're mean They're talking like, about it like it's like the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> but it basically is. It's basically the Super Bowl for women. Yeah, I definitely like am excited about it and stuff. But yeah, like, 
yeah, I think what my prediction is either Susie's going to come back and kind of like, you know, be like, you know, I thought about it and I, you know, still want to be with you and everything. And then they're going to get married or is Clinton just going to be like single? Because I, <laughs> I don't really know how he can like go back from like the things that he said about like Susie because he was like, oh yeah, like Susie's my favorite. He was like telling his parents like, I know there's no going back from that. Yeah, it's like they're gonna watch this and be like, oh, so Susie was your favorite, right? Like you know what just I mean? Just like uh, she, 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 she should honestly just cut the other two girls loose right yeah. now. Like I don't know how they're gonna fill up another hour episode. Yeah. After this, because he basically already admitted that she's like his one and only yeah and like yeah she's like she was like the one from the start that i thought was like the cutest and like yeah like i just feel like clayton i, I yeah i just feel like yeah like she was the one he was always gonna pick yeah i feel like i said this before but yeah forrest is like really good at predicting you can just the tell bachelor <laughs> like some women Winners. just like kind of shine like you know they like stand out from the crowd and uh yeah like if you have your pick of like 30 women like obviously you're gonna go for that one like yeah and yeah, and Clayton and I probably have similar tastes, you know, we're both from Missouri, you know, so. Yeah, it's funny because Clayton like looks like he's from Missouri. He totally does. He has, yeah, he like, looks that, like a bro. Yeah, he has like that Missouri vibe that you guys have. Yeah, right. <laughs> Every guy in Missouri kind of just has a certain kind of Clayton-ish vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, uh, m- maybe maybe uh, we'll bump into him and Susie just ar- <gasps> around town. That'd be crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> I wouldn't bother them. I don't believe in bothering like famous people. Yeah, we 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 would see them and we'd be like, "Oh my god, it's them." And then we'd, you know, like talk to each other about it. But yeah. we wouldn't like run up to them. Yeah, can you imagine like coming back to your hometown and then just like being like a local celebrity for the rest of your life? Yeah, that'd be crazy. The the, the bar you drink at probably has like a banner that they that's like up for like 30 years, you Clayton know. Clayton. Yeah. Here. Yeah, Clayton, home of the Clayton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dusty. It's like 25 years on and it's like, you know, it's, covered in dust you know yeah clayton's divorced you know oh, but they, they, they still keep it up no i don't know i i so, so i feel like clayton sometimes an idiot but like yeah in that in last night's episode i was just like all men are idiots so you know you can't whatever you i can't, was just uh, like i was just like surprised at his like parents like didn't even like stand up for him i don't know i just feel like if like our son was like son you done fucked up like, if any of our kids were, like, in some, like, situation like this, like, I would just be, like, you know, like, trying to be, like, supportive and, like, and everything and, like, give, like, gentle advice. Like, I wouldn't be, like, so, like, rude. Like, God. God. <laughs> yeah, she was really excited when he first uh, came and told her. Remember the first episode when he, like, was like, Mom, I'm the next, I'm the next bachelor. Yeah, and she was, and she was like, like oh. <laughs> That would be crazy. And now she's like, oh. Yeah, I for, like I've what only What kind of horrible piece of shit did I raise? We've only watched like one other season of The Bachelor. Cut him some fucking slack. Jeez. And yeah, seriously, cut him some slack. Um Mom, be on my side. Yeah, right? What the fuck? That's how I I was like, are you kidding? If I was yeah. Clayton's mom, I'd be like, you know, these whores aren't good enough for you. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I <laughs> that's toxic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they should be thinking they're lucky stars that they get to be with my baby boy Ew, no <laughs> that's taking it too far we should get um we should get some like uh like clothing for our son when that says like mama's boy no on no, it. no 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 i hate that it's so ugly w- w- what are some of the worst ones you've seen yeah i'm like, trying to think of some, I was I, like, i've seen some bad ones was, at, like carters and stuff yeah i was like shopping for our son the other day and yeah i saw some I, I always see things that's like mama's love or like mama's boy. Well, mama's love is fine. It's still a little bit weird. Yeah, but, I don't know. Like, but like there, there are some like cringy, like toxic ones. Or yeah, like mama's my first Valentine or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like not in, like, I'm not into that. I, I like, uh, I saw some really cute shirts I, that I was going to get matching for Luna and our son that say like mama's little sprout <laughs> or like mommy's little sprout because when luna was first born i used to call her my little sprout a lot so i felt like that was kind of cute yeah yeah th- there's like there's like ones for like girls too where it's like you know uh watch out boys my, m- my daddy's my my protector or, or some <laughs> stupid or yeah, shit it's like, da- my first love is daddy yeah yeah something. it's like <laughs> s- some cringy shit like yeah yeah uh, no we, we should distribute a segment every week we should like, maybe yeah, we, you should look up some we bad should look ones. up some bad ones 
<laughs> bad like baby clothes like just yeah toxic baby clothes i think it's cute when things say like you know like yeah i guess like mama's love is cute or like mama's whole world or like something like that like but yeah i don't like any kind of like the like the valentine ones or like the ones where it kind of implies that like your future spouse is like replacing this this one's bad your your parent i don't know that's weird there's (laughs) a shirt that says uh i'm proof it's a baby uh, like a onesie it says i'm proof that my daddy does not shoot blanks and there's a image of a rifle okay that's ugly that's awful that's disgusting that's terrible Wait, what's this one? You know, I uh, you know me. I'm what? I'm I'm very pro Second Amendment. Like I'm pro guns, but don't don't include guns on children's clothing. Yeah, that's disgusting. That that that's awful. <laughs> um, I typed in toxic baby clothes and it's just articles about which clothes not to buy because they're made in sweatshops or whatever. Oh, yeah. no, not that kind of toxic. I'm talking about like clothes that are like have sayings on them is that garrett Hold on i think i think our buddy garrett is here okay let's pause we're gonna, we're gonna put a pause on the podcast we'll be back after this welcome back to the most demented season of the bachelor yet okay played and he actually enters like an, an insane asylum at the end of this <laughs> end of the show literally multiple people are hospitalized i'm so broken <laughs> i'm so broken okay um i found like really really horrible baby shirts oh cool all right yeah hit me with them this one says here i'll show you i took a screenshot this one says uh oh god (laughs) damn it all right so it's a it's a baby's uh onesie it's white with black lettering and it says already a boob man no, yeah, that's terrible. That that's just that there's all sorts of things wrong with that. Yeah, there's like mul- there's mul- multiple levels of fucked upness with that one. Disgusting. I guess some people just don't like think about it that much, or they're just like ah, I'm like sure. Just like use your brain. Like isn't that just like ah. just like I just don't I, under- mean, I, I, don't I just know. don't see how you can like see that and like ah. you know someone gets that for you at your it's baby funny shower. He's, a baby. he's not a full grown man. Or but he's a, but it's funny because boobs. Um. All right. Let's see. Let's see what this one is. I am proof that my daddy doesn't always play video games. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, babe, that's so cringe. Yeah. Wow. That's like a burn against the dad. Yeah, like they think it's like funny, but no, it's it's not. Oh, there's one that says "dad proof," and there, there's a oh, there's a bunch of arrows everywhere listing where everything goes: arms here, head here, legs yeah, here. Yeah, so like the dad can like get his own child dressed. Oh, that's cringe. As if he like you know can't just like decipher, figure it out, like how to put a onesie on a kid. Wow. <laughs> Are we just like killjoys? Like I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm no. just like like a killjoy. But yeah, like these. But yeah, these are disgusting. I would never put these on my child. That's if, awful. Huh? If somebody like got us uh, something like that, like for our kid, I would like forever kind of like question their judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I'd always think about that and associate it with them. Yeah. And then I'd burn the shirt. Yeah, definitely. Don't even donate that. Yeah, no, don't don't bestow that onto somebody <laughs> else. Like, just throw it away. It's like evil, you know. Like when you find evil, you it, have to kill you it. You know, it's sad that like they wasted these like perfectly good like onesies and put these like horrible. Oh, I'm sure they're made out of the cheapest material possible. Shit on them. The, just the cheapest fucking rag of of material. All right, what do you got for me, babe? We, we we took kind of a break there for a few hours. Mason McKenzie came over. Yeah. Uh, well, Garrett came over first. We built some Lego for a few hours. Got a good work day in. Garrett built a Lego morgue for my upcoming Batman animation, and then uh and then Mason McKenzie came over and Mason and I recorded a podcast, and uh, McKenzie and Alyssa hung out and so did Adeline and Luna. Yeah. 
And uh, now we're back recording our podcast. And now we're back, record. You know, continuing to record this podcast. Forrest is all about his podcasts recently. <laughs> yes, too. I am. Well, when you have you know a setup this good. <laughs> yeah, this setup is really good. It looks amazing. It it's really fun to like record the podcast down here. Like. I was kind of like, ooh, like, I want to record a podcast. Like, I'm kind of jealous of the vape buffet. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me in on this podcast. Let me in. <laughs> yeah. You're, like, banging at the door. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, this is it's good. It's good. Good. It's like uh, free therapy. You know? Yeah. It's like therapy you don't need to spend money on. Yeah. You know. Um, we got Luna here joining us. Yeah, Luna was taking a nap earlier, but now she's here um excellent so what's our next topic you know that's a good question i got some juicy stuff like what i got all sorts of juicy stuff well for, for, for he's going thing, through my phone <laughs> uh asian americans are leaving the democrats so there's that it's pretty juicy <laughs> i screenshotted that on accident i don't know why i'm on my camera roll. sure on accident um, I screenshot a lot of things on accident. That's because you set you the, the back of your phone to yeah. To take, <laughs> yeah, that was like no, a, that no, was a mistake. Exactly, yeah. Like, like I, I found out in like the settings of something that you can like change the back of your phone to be like a button. Yeah, like uh, and it'll take screenshots for you. You can map it to do whatever you want. And yeah, I just made it take screenshots, and I like always forget that it's there, and like I just have so many random ass like. <laughs> screenshots on my phone like on my camera we could like go into our settings and change it back but then we have to look up how to do that i like forgot but yeah I, I, I don't remember like, how to do yeah. it we'd have to look it up on youtube again i just like don't really care enough like it's right fine. Like, it's not... I'll do, i can just delete the photo <laughs> it's not that big a deal it's kind of funny like every once in a while yeah i'll find a photo or something that i'm like what the hell yeah yeah um what else we got in here i was like kind of thinking about I don't know, like, should I, I give, like, a little, like, like, birth, like, tip for fact? I don't know, because I saw something earlier about, like, this thing called, like, delayed cord clamping for, like, after you give birth, like, when the baby is first came out. Ooh, what's that? And I didn't know about this when I was pregnant with Luna, but my midwife did, and she hooked me up. Um, it's ba- it's literally so simple. It's basically just not cutting the umbilical cord for like five to ten minutes after the baby's born. Oh, of course, yeah. And just like letting, um, not cutting it until the the blood. Yeah, you you want to keep the blood flowing for a little while because there's still good nutrients and things that the baby is uh, taking from the placenta. Even even after um, everything's pushed out? Yeah, it's like one third of the baby's blood is in the placenta. You probably don't know like what any of this means unless you like have had a baby. But I think keep, people, keep people this, know what the placenta is. Keep this in in the in your back pocket. You guys know what the placenta is, right? <laughs> I would hope so. I took anatomy class. Yeah. Basic bi- biology and anatomy. Yeah, so basically, like, just wait. It's literally just as simple as just waiting five to ten minutes after your baby comes out to cut the cord or clamp the cord. And you can see, like, there's pictures if you want to Google if you're interested. Like, what, like, a really fresh, like, like just born, like, one second ago baby's like umbilical cord looks like it's like thick and red and it's like it pulses <laughs> like a like a like a vein like a heart or whatever yeah and then literally like five minutes later it's like white and like thin and like has no blood in it and still right so, a huge difference yeah so yeah the umbilical cord is really crazy that was something i wasn't really prepared for when uh yeah. you first gave birth to luna and uh the thing was like it just had this like uh, crazy look to it. I, I kind of like always thought it was just like a cord, you know, like a like a like a purple like string basically. But it, it's actually fairly thick, and it, it's kind of like multiple. It almost looks like multiple multicolored cords wrapped around each other, and it just looks like a uh, like a nerd's rope or something. Yeah, it's it's crazy cool looking. 
yeah like my midwife like had me like touch it like she was like here like touch your cord like like when I was holding like Luna for like the very first time or whatever and yeah it was like pulsing like really hard and then like all that blood was going into Luna and like it kind of makes their first moments like easier as they kind of adjust to like breathing air because they get all their oxygen and all their nutrients from the placenta while they're in your womb right um that's why like um you know you can have a water birth and it's like not harmful to the baby because as long as you pull the baby up out of the water within like five minutes of birth like the baby will or be able to breathe and you know have oxygen yeah like when i was planning my birth with luna um i was like thinking i was gonna have a water birth and um my that was like a concern that my dad had he was like you know like like is the baby gonna like come out of the womb and like immediately just like have like a like be like drowned basically (laughs) or like breathe in a bunch of water and i'm like no 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 like the baby's like in water like in the womb and it has oxygen through the placenta so yeah it's basically it's basically like a like a dolphin at that point yeah i mean you obviously have to like take the baby out of the water like right like you know once it's out like immediately like don't keep the baby under the water sea mammal (laughs) (laughs) but like until you cut off the um because yeah the cord the the cord cord. only lasts so long like some people it's like five minutes but you know it could be like less so yeah just like but yeah basically like as long as you take the baby out like right away like out of the water (laughs) yeah like you can have a you can have a water birth and yeah like just like um yeah, delayed cord clamping. Do you think Aquaman had a water birth? Well, yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't know. That was just like a little thing. That was just on my mind. Yeah, no, that's good information to have. And a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of doctors don't even know about it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like if you give birth at the hospital, there's probably like a huge chance that even if you like ask for that, they like won't do it. But it's like very simple. Um, Like it's not... Like, I just don't understand why it's not, like, standard, like, practice, but... Because doctors want to get home. <laughs> they can't wait the five extra minutes. The big game is on. And they got to get to the bar. Yeah. They got to get their drink with the, with the with the boys. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, what, 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 else, what else are we going to talk about? You got anything, babe? What you got? What shit? What do I got? What do you got? What do I got? What do you got? Um, I got some emails. Oh yeah, let's read some emails. That's a good idea, Ben. All right, let's do it, guys. If you want to write in, get your email read on the pod. That's just for clicks pod at gmail dot com. Just the number four clicks pod at gmail dot com. We got a question for the pod from. Oh, she says, keep my name anonymous. Damn it. I fucked that up. Well, tr- you know, too late now. Uh, the email is not loading. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hello, Forrest and Alyssa. So my girlfriend left me nearly two months ago. I really did not want this breakup and I still have feelings for her. It, w- it was one of those breakups where you thought the person was the love of your life, but they end up leaving you. She said I was too good and that she needed to get help and be alone even though I was always by her side through thick and thin. Three days after the breakup, though, she started messaging me again, and we've we've been talking every day since. The thing is, it's like super dull small talk. Sometimes it gets interesting, but for the most part, it feels like a hot and cold game. I text her more, and she backs away. Then I give her space, and she comes back. I don't understand what she wants, but I get the feeling she doesn't either. We're like barely talking every day now, but she still responds with dull messages and somehow continues the, to convo. It's like she's leaving tiny breadcrumbs for me to barely survive on while I'm starving for more. Any advice would help. Thanks, guys. Sweet. Well, uh, that that's uh, that's definitely an issue. Um, I think it's I think that's pretty common with people who uh, are insecure. You know, I don't know exactly what 
your your girlfriend or you know your love is going through but uh i think it's important that you just continue to let her know that you're there for her and you want to be there for her i mean at a certain point you will have to make the decision yourself to move on but it sounds like you're still pretty committed and you still have a lot of love and feelings for her and want to be with her forever and everything so i'd say for the time being just try to like stick it out and try to like understand her perspective and where she's coming from. Uh, what 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 would you say, babe? I just kind of feel like if someone breaks up with you, like you should move on. I don't know. But she broke up with her because she said that that you know she's too good for do, for her. Do you know how I feel about that? I feel like that's like bullshit. Like, I feel like if you really wanted to be with somebody, like, and, you know, oh, like, I'm such a fucked up, like, person, I'm so broken, or whatever. <laughs> Is this Clayton? Like, <laughs> like, Is her girlfriend Clayton? <laughs> like, um, like, you would just be, like, grateful that this person, like, still wants to be with you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know. Like, you wouldn't be, like... Like, you would still just be with them and then just be, like, you know, like, grateful and, you know... I, I just kind of feel like this whole like game that people play or like what they when they say stuff like that it's like not true like it's just kind of like they want to be I mean I don't know like everyone's intentions like I don't know I can't read everybody's mind but just like the vibe that I get when I hear people say that is like they like they kind of want to be like free or like not in, in a committed relationship but they but then if they still come back and like text and like give you like breadcrumbs or whatever like they just still kind of like want this like temporary like attention or whatever yeah i mean i think everyone deserves someone who's enthusiastic and wants to actively engage and be that other person's like rock to lean on Sounds like right now it's a pretty one-sided relationship. Yeah, you don't want to be, like, in, like, a one-sided relationship. Like, you know, like, that. you just kind of have, like, I feel like, I feel like people who just kind of accept people's, like, breadcrumbs kind of have, like, low self-esteem or, like, low self-worth. But she also might just love her, you know? Well, I, she, she I, I need more, like, context. Like, how long have you been together? Like, how old are you? Like, if you're, like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, it is true to, like, 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 love is, like, really powerful. Um, but it's, like, it's still just, like, really one-sided. Like, it's kind of just, like, sad to, like, be, like, really in love with somebody and then have them just, like you know, not really, like, love you back or, like, feel the same way. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I would probably uh, attempt to see her, you know, physically again and see if that spark is still there. And I would be pretty forward and, like, pushy with her. I know you want to kind of, like, give her her space and stuff. But I think if you do that and she's receptive to it, then... You can move forward with the relationship, but if she's like pushing you away again and you get the sense that she doesn't want you there for real this time, then maybe it's time to move on. But I wouldn't just completely abandon it. Yeah, I guess that's a good, good advice. Like try to see her in person and like just be like really like, yeah, yeah, what Forrest said, just be pushy. Like give her like one more chance. You know, be sensitive, but also be like, you know, just be like, hey, so like, this is what I want. Are we together or are we like not? (laughs) Like, just try to hang out with her and see catch catch the vibes, you know. Don't I want to put her on the spot necessarily, like make a decision right now. But I would try to like actually physically hang out with her again and see what happens. But I wish you the best. Uh thanks for writing in. That that's a it's a tough situation to be in and I think it's uh, a lot more common than you may realize. So, you're not alone. A lot of people act like this and uh yeah, hopefully you guys can work it out, but if not, there's always, there's always, uh, you know, you don't want to hear that, but you know, there's, there's always, uh, more exciting opportunities just right, right around the corner. So don't, uh, don't feel like this is like your one shot at love. Cause it's definitely not. All right. Next email question for just for clicks. Let's see. Uh, 
Forrest, I hope you and your family are doing well. I love your videos. I mean, who wouldn't? But I have a question, need advice. I've been doing stop motion since I since just before quarantine, but I have a problem. I haven't told my friends that I do it, and I think if that if I do tell them, then they will think that it's nerdy. How do you think I should tell them I do stop motion animation with Lego without them thinking that it's weird or stupid? Luke. Nice. Uh well, um, it's so funny. Like I, I do get this question a lot. Uh, it's like he's coming out to his friends. Like it's like he's you know gay in like a Southern Baptist. Yeah, town. it's almost like you like would rather like be gay and come out to your friends than like tell them that you do stop motion. <laughs> I wonder like if his friends have given him like reason to think that they would like think this. Like, are they just like the kind of group of friends that like pick on everybody and are just like you know super cool and like you yeah. know like always like you know put other people down type of friends or or is he just kind of making up a lot of this in his head and like there's no real reason to be scared no like i definitely feel like i have known people and like have had friends that were just kind of like mean like Ew. <laughs> he does what yeah like they just like have like some judgmental thing to say about like everything that's gross yeah yeah well, uh, no, just, I don't think you need to tell them anything, honestly. Like, you don't need to, like, come out. You're not gay. Like, even, like, gay people, like, do they really need to come out? Like, I don't know. Just, like, this whole yeah, idea of, like... you just, like, like date, start dating... Just start dating men and yeah. it'll, it'll become apparent. Uh, so, yeah, just make the Lego videos and, if, you know, if it comes up naturally in conversation for any re reason, just be like, you know, you know, I, I gotta get home, I gotta go do my Lego video or whatever, and they'll be like, what is that? And you'll be like, yeah, it's this thing I've been doing. And if they have, you know, some sort of shitty opinion that uh, doesn't vibe with you, then you maybe hang out with that person less or, uh, you know, confront them and fight them. And, the, you know, uh, with your words, I'm not endorsing violence. Um, but, yeah, you, you should uh, you should be proud of what you're doing. I mean, if you enjoy doing it and if it's not hurting anyone, then go for it, dude. I mean, obviously, it sounds like you're passionate about it. And, uh, yeah, you'd be surprised how often I get this question because a lot of people feel like ashamed of doing it and I, I never really had that i don't know like i've, I've never experienced i've definitely experienced shame in regards to like other things but i've never been like oh like what are girls gonna think about me or what are guys gonna think about me because i make lego videos um maybe that's because i've had like a lot of, of like success doing it um from like an early age like i just i've been doing youtube for you know 13 14 years now or something so and, you know, I, like my videos started getting views like pretty early on in my career. So I, I felt like, you know, validated. But um, I can imagine if you don't have that kind of like early validation and, you know, your, vi your videos are only getting a few views or you're not super happy with how they're turning out, it might be kind of a tough like uphill battle. But really the thing is, is like this is something for you. You know, so much of what you do in your life is for other people. And I think it's important to have things that are just for you and that you're doing to improve your talent and to increase your skill set and if you gen genuinely uh derive joy from it then like what's the problem i mean really like you, sh you should put your happiness first above other people's like opinions about you like that none of that really matters i mean even if they do say something snarky or whatever like they're really just saying that kind of thing to pass the time i, I bet they don't even really believe it they're just saying it just to like get a reaction out of you know a laugh or whatever from another friend because they're like worried about like what that friend thinks about them so it's not really uh even about you so don't don't take this kind of thing too personally uh would you uh add anything to that honey um no i i definitely agree yeah like people who are like like mean and snarky and stuff like they're really just insecure you know they're like uh, so they they like don't have fun i guess so like they don't want like anybody else to have fun like doing anything <laughs> they think they're having fun but they're actually miserable yeah yeah i mean it depends on how like mean they are about it some people might just like think it's lame and they might make like some like tiny little small comment and th that can hurt too but uh maybe they're not like you know outright attacking you for it but uh but yeah it's it's really not important like you, you have to like learn to like detach yourself and detach your feelings from like other people's feelings about you you'll learn that as you get older um as you get older at least for me other people's feelings about you become less and less important 
Um, and that's kind of the goal. You don't want to have other people have a hold over you and the way you experience the world. All right. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, all right. This is kind of a long one. You ready, babe? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to take a nice drink of water before this one. Mm. Ah, all right. Forrest and Alyssa, I hope that you are well these days. Luna is very cute and growing so big. I run my college newspaper as one of the editors-in-chief, where I specialize in running the news and opinions section. My amazing partner, who runs the arts and entertainment and sports section, is very shy and agreeable, but she is the smart one and the workhorse, whereas I'm more of the dumb loudmouth who isn't afraid to make tough calls. Anyways, before spring break ended... I was discussing with my team about a new bill in our local government that is currently being debated to be passed. The bill will help combat college student homelessness by providing four things. Free housing, internet, groceries, and most controversially, controversially, free cars that are 2016 or newer to two college students who are having housing issues. This caused a lot of conflict between two members of my news team because one of my new talented staff writers felt it wasn't enough government support saying that they should at least add free boats because our area is prone to floods <laughs> and one of my senior editors who was more reserved feeling that adding free cars was already too generous normally i would tell them to keep the arguments between them however my junior staff writer then decided to insult the senior editor and call him a stupid immoral and evil nazi ironically the senior editor was a jew <laughs> I got very angry about it and decided to shut the argument, shut down the argument abruptly. Importantly, I shouted out, I will not tolerate name calling from a new staff writer, especially if that name calling is one of, is to one of my senior editors. This caused a lot of conflicted feelings between the newspaper, between people in the newspaper, including my partner. In general, they felt like I was doing a good thing ending the argument between the two. However, there are two issues that followed the incident. The first is that the talented new staff writer was a popular person and many saw him as a a successor to become the new editor-in-chief. My team is mostly worried about the new staff writer, that the new staff writer will continue. I'm sorry. My team is mostly worried that the new staff writer will consider quitting. The other is when I pointed out that he is a new writer and that I emphasized that he should not insult our senior editor. Many think that I was being a bit too, uh, how do you say this word? Like it's hierarchy, but it's hierarchical. Yeah. Hierarchy. How do you say this word? Right there. Are you going to show it to me? Yes. There it is. Hi, hi, you're... <laughs> I have no idea. I, I know what you mean. Google it's to... hierarchy, but like hierarchical. <laughs> hierarchical. I, I... Hierarchical. Hierarchical. <laughs> let's let's run that back. Can we just have Surrey read these? That'd be way better. Hierarchical. Can you just read the rest of this, Surrey? Uh, and that being. And uh, a, a co-editor-in-chief is more akin to being a first-among-equals type of di- dy- dynamic rather than strictly being the boss of the newspaper. Okay. Uh, some of my trusted friends in the newspaper suggested that I step down as co-editor-in-chief and permanently leave, reasoning that, reasoning that the few more terms of my leadership that the few more terms of my leadership as co-editor-in-chief is not as important as potentially having a talented editor-in-chief as a s- successor. I admit that most of my concern with leaving is that my partner would get taken advantage of because she is very shy and agreeable. Forrest, as someone who runs your own business and manages employees, I was curious if you think that I was being a bad leader in the moment and can offer any additional insight on what being a leader is like. I want to do what's best for the team, even if it actually means stepping down, but I still maintain that what I did was right. Brad, nice. All right, sounds good. Thanks for the email, Brad. Okay, so people want him to step down because he said he wouldn't tolerate name calling from like a a, like a lesser 
member to a like junior staff writer a junior member to a senior member uh called the senior editor a, a stupid no- immoral a and evil nazi okay quote and the editor was a jew all right uh I, he I, so so this so brad this guy he got very angry about it and decided to shut the argument down he said he shouted it out i will not tolerate name calling from a new staff writer especially if that name calling is one is to one of my senior editors. Whatever, dude. Sounds like your this newspaper's got a lot of uh Sounds like conflict. Lots of drama heads in this newspaper. Yeah, I think I think you did the right thing. Yeah, you definitely don't need to like step down. No. That's definitely like crazy. Everyone else should quit if they're so concerned. Yeah. You you're fine. Uh I think um I I don't really understand the uh interpersonal dynamics and underpinnings and workings of a newspaper so i don't know what you know the power structure is like you know even on like feature films and stuff the power structure is always different you know like uh, there's producers and directors and you know um executive producers and uh you know depending on the situation some writers you know some people might have more power than others i think every production is different so i imagine that a newspaper is much the same way um yes i mean uh, first among equals uh, that's that's literally what a boss is so i don't really know like you're like you're not the boss but you're but you're also first among equals like i don't like you're first like you're the boss like i don't i don't know what this weird like delineation is that the that your that your crew is trying to create but uh if you're the editor-in-chief or the co-editor-in-chief then you're like above them and it is a hierarchy that's like the nature of a of a business or n- the nature of a group of people coming together to form an organization it's like this isn't some like hippy dippy like you know do whatever kind of thing this is like a serious like newspaper you know for your school so uh yeah you have the ability to like call shots like that um you know that being said i think you should respect the opinions of other people who work there and hear them out and consider them but it sounds like you know you thought about it and you you don't regret making your uh, your opinion known. So I think with all that taken into consideration, it's really up to you. I mean, would you would, do you want to stay at this newspaper and potentially deal with you know several people who might not like you, but still do the newspaper anyway, and potentially run into conflict with them, or are you not that into it and you're just like I'd rather just move on and do something else with my time. Uh, so really, yeah, it's up to you. I'm not, I'm not you. I don't know what it's like. So, uh, if if you're asking me if I thought you were being a bad leader, no, no, I don't. I think you're being fine. Sounded like, uh, sounded like a pretty heated situation though. Yeah. Lots of drama. Sounds like a, a good, a a fair amount of drama happening in this, You're trying uh, to navigate, navigate the drama of your school newspaper. It's a college newspaper. Oh, college yeah, yeah. college and school is like the same. Well, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I wasn't even sure. I had to reread it because I was like, is this a high school paper or college? Dude, what, what if he's like literally like the he's one of the editors in chiefs, so he's the co-editor in chief. And like, what if it's like literally like like Stanford or like Harvard or something? Well, that would be sick. In that case, I'd say don't step down. That's bullshit. But if it's just like some like you know school that you know you're like whatever not that big a deal then then yeah like just step down you know if if, if it's not worth your time if there's too much drama that just sounds like i would not want to be the 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 the, uh, working at a newspaper that's just not my vibe but um you're right i I have managed people before but I, i i've never really managed like a large group of people where like kind of like um you have to balance like the emotions of everyone. I mean, I, I have in a sense cause I, I shot some zombie movies, but, uh, that wasn't really like a day to day thing. That was kind of a special occasion thing. Usually when I work with people, it's like, I'm just working with like one other person or maybe two other people and everyone gets along well. So yeah, I don't really have much like insight to lend on like how to deal with like, you know, personal conflicts in the workplace. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say just, uh, you know, stand strong, stand firm, and let people know that uh, you're not backing down. Because if someone is calling someone stupid and a Nazi, they pretty much invalidated their like whole argument just from the from the get go.
because they're like resorting to name calling and doesn't sound like a very good reporter if he's uh I mean apparently this guy's some sort of hot shot but if he's calling someone a Nazi and stupid sounds like he's not very bright <laughs> yeah himself. it's kind of like I just feel like if you call somebody like stupid or like an idiot like and you're trying to have like a conversation or a debate about you know something political or like your opinions about something like that like you should just stick to your arguments <laughs> and like why you think you're right and right. the evidence and the you know like the data and or whatever like you know yeah hit him with those facts yeah hit him with the facts like don't resort to, like you know you might internally be like oh man like what an idiot but don't say that right you make like, yourself look stupid yeah you make it you, you kind of like invalidate like your argument like you yeah. know so yeah i don't think this guy's even like adding that much to the I mean, i'm not there but i don't think he's even really adding much to the uh to the paper to begin with but yeah thanks for writing in brad that's uh interesting email I got that last year march of last year Oh, so it's probably already like all resolved. Oh yeah, it's now. all resolved. Yeah, <laughs> it's March this year. <laughs> yeah, so this this was uh, almost a year ago to the date. This 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 came in March twenty third of last year. So, Brad, if you're still there, hopefully hope hope it all worked out, man. Should we read some of my the assholes? Oh, did you find some? No. Oh. Maybe I should find. Some. Well, we'll have some. Am I the assholes? up for you guys in a minute here but let's see, let's see if we can get, cram through one more e- email freedom of speech stuff i saw on your twitter lol hey forest second time writing in i hope i make it in another podcast lol i wanted to talk about your recent twitter post you made thursday february 11th i don't have any hate to say due to hating everyone equally but i do agree with your statement that what people say are just shitty opinions and or beliefs Maybe if we hear them out, we could try to talk them out of that mind space and get people to open their minds. I think it's a step too far to get someone fired for something they've said on the internet. Speak your mind. It's freedom of speech. It's not evil if you're just speaking your mind, right? I was reading Marvel's Civil War 2 book, and in the beginning, She-Hulk is defending this guy who all he did was talk about the good old days of robbing banks and how he would have done stuff differently of course he was just speaking his mind and did nothing wrong but he got arrested and put on trial and put in jail all for speaking what was in his head how far are we from putting people behind bars for the freedom of speech for saying something about robbing a bank saying the wrong pronouns having a difference in opinion pretty sure that i just wanted to write something about how people are going are getting shot on for saying what's on their minds but instead i wrote a fucking essay oh well sorry guys I'd like to hear your guys' opinion on people being fired for their tweets or other stupid things. Hope your family is doing great and stay safe. Nice. Thank you. Uh what do you what do you have to say about that, babe? Um I mean, like I do think that it's kind of tricky because I kind of do think that people like sh- should be like able to fire whoever they want. You know, like um, but I also don't think that, I don't know if this was, like, part of the question, but, like, I do have a problem with, like, yeah, just, like, the government regulating anything. Like, if the government were to, like, pass a law and they were, like, okay, like, if you tweet this or say this or write about this or whatever, like, you're going to jail or, like, or your employer, like, has to fire you or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would definitely right. have an issue with that. But it's like, you know, if I were to, like, I don't know, if I were an employer and, like, I saw somebody, like, tweet something that I just, like, radically disagreed with and, like, found offensive, <laughs> like, I would want, like, the, like, freedom to be able to fire them, I guess. Um, yeah, you should be able to fire anyone you want. It's your business. Yeah. Um, so if if you don't like someone, you know, someone misgenders someone and you're like, hey, that's not cool. I don't like want to work with you. You shouldn't have to continue to hire them. Yeah, definitely. Or like, yeah, exactly. So. But at the same time, like, yeah, like what Alyssa said, like, it shouldn't be up to the government who who's allowed to fire and who's allowed to hire people. Yeah. That should be up to the individuals who run the businesses. I definitely do think it's been getting, like, really crazy, like, recently. Um, 
but it is just like a slippery slope for me I like am torn about it because you know you can post something that's like a hundred percent true and like it gets you know you, it's like sparks like outrage <laughs> you know what I mean or like something that's very like moderate and like wouldn't have been seen as like offensive or like you know would just be like something normal to say and then now it's like really controversial and like you know so like I do see where like some of these people were are coming from kind of like where more conservative people are coming from or whatever but at the same time it's also just like yeah you should have the freedom to fire anyone you want um yeah yeah we should just value freedom above everything else yeah it's like yeah exactly (laughs) yeah one thing that always kind of bothers me or like i guess gets confusing for people is that i'll say an opinion i have and people like automatically assume that i think that that opinion should be like the law Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like this weird like default like assumption that is completely so off base like just because like i feel like people shouldn't do this that doesn't necessarily automatically make it that I think this should be a law. And I think for a lot of people, they don't like see a difference. They think like, okay, I have this opinion. I'm right. So like this should be the rule for everyone. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's like, they're kind of discounting that like there's like freedom of like ideas and freedom of like, um, like outcome. And like you, you have to like allow in a society for different ideas, even if you don't agree with them to, to happen so that we can like experiment and like, make progress you know and try different things so yeah i just i i I feel like um a lot of people get tripped up on that Mm -hmm. and uh you shouldn't ever assume anything really you should you know take read read a tweet or whatever but don't don't like bring a bunch of your like biases to it you know ask questions don't be afraid to like appear like you know ignorant i think a lot of people just like jump to the conclusion to a conclusion because they want to feel smart or superior and they don't want to actually discuss or, or or ask questions of this person because they're like oh if i'm like asking questions then like it may, it might look like i'm agreeing with them or whatever and yeah that's kind of all like stupid because it gets in the way of like having a real conversation and uh kind of dumbs down the entire conversation and makes everything way more simpler than it really should be i think that's a, a huge issue is like people try to oversimplify everything and a lot of times things take time to discuss and pull apart and everyone wants to kind of consolidate events into little bite-sized clickbait headlines and uh that's not the real world so there's a lot of strife and uh kind of like confusion generated that way which is unfortunate but uh hopefully we get better over time i think the internet is still a relatively new thing. Twitter is still new. Uh, so it's gonna. there's going to be an adjustment period. It might take a generation. <laughs> but uh, I feel like eventually some kind of order and calm and respect may restore in the way we d- approach each other online. And uh, yeah, I, I think back in the day, you know, even if you disagreed with someone, it seems that there is a general respect shown to them. And I think that's still the case a lot of times when you speak to someone in person. It's just the having the separation of screens and having the anonymity of online presence. It allows people to kind of be a lot more nasty and act out or say things that uh, they wouldn't do in real life. So I try to approach my my online interactions no differently than how I would approach a physical interaction. So that's not always the easiest thing to do. And I do fail at that sometimes, but that's typically where I'm coming from. So I try to, uh, you know, not name call, not, uh, not, not joke around too much when I'm discussing an important topic. Um, it's just, uh, you have to kind of like resist your like natural edgy edgelord urges to like be that smarky, you know, smarmy, like smart, uh, smart ass kind of guy. Um, which is difficult, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to call someone an idiot than it is to actually ask them questions and try to get to the root of why they feel this way. 
Yeah, um, I would I would like to add that like I just feel like even though yeah it is kind of it's is pretty crazy right now with like the freedom of speech thing, especially like on the internet and everything. Um, but it was like way worse in the past. Like I was listening to this podcast about how this guy kind of thinks that we're like entering like a second enlightenment like era or period. Um, and he was kind of explaining how like, you know, history has like six stages that we kind of like keep repeating like over and over again. Um, but he brought up a good point that like, in the first enlightenment period like these authors and people who were like bringing just like really simple like ideas you know of like freedom and like you know all men are created equal and like no one is like just inherently better than anybody else like they were literally like getting sent to like prison and like having like all their freedom just like taken away and i mean i i guess you could say like that you know taking someone's like livelihood away you know, is, is, like, you know, real, it's obviously really bad, but it's just not, like, quite the same as, like, someone, like, seizing you and, like, putting you in prison, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so, um, we're not at that level yet, yeah, we're not at that level yet, and, um, so, yeah, like, I just try to, like, appreciate, like, the freedom that I have, like, right now, to just like say and like it is true like for the most part yeah and i think it's important to recognize your freedom that you have now and utilize it i mean so many people have freedom but they don't actually make use of it and if you have an opinion on something something you feel strongly about or you see a conversation happening and you have a thought then jump in, you know, make your voice heard. That's really important. Right now, I think, like, the biggest kind of, like, like, deterrent to saying what's on your mind is just, like, social repercussions as in, like, you know, right. like, getting it, like, feeling like, you know, your friends or family aren't going to like you anymore. Um, and, you know, obviously that is important. Like, you don't want to just be, like, on your own or whatever. Like, you like you have, like, a natural desire and instinct to be accepted into, like, your group or whatever. But, um, like, as long as, like, that's, like, the only deterrent that you have, <laughs> like, for saying something, like, I just feel like you should say what's on your mind. <laughs> like especially if you think there's just such like common sense and you can yeah i think be it's okay to like you know be wrong and like change your mind later and like kind of admit that you were wrong i feel like a lot of people have a hard time doing that um yeah try to be humble yeah be humble and like yeah you don't have to say like your opinions like in like a mean or nasty way like you can just kind of like you know like gently like challenge the opinions of others or by just kind of like you know well what about this or <laughs> like you know what I mean like or just kind of, yeah like it doesn't have to be like a big like dramatic like scene or whatever all right guys thanks so much for listening to the just for clicks podcast join us next week when we'll have guest Paul Dano on the pod he's going to talk about his performance as the Riddler and how he got into character. Apparently, um, he uh, wore saran wrap everywhere he went for six months straight. Wow. And he didn't know until he started shooting that he could actually poke holes in the saran, in the saran wrap. So he was actually just like sweating profusely for six months and uh, caused him severe health problems. I would definitely still sweat even if there were like holes. Well, yeah, you still sweat, but it's it's not as bad. I was wearing a dress yesterday that was like just so like unbelievably like unbreathable. Um, that yeah, I felt like I was wrapped in saran wrap. Oh boy, you look good though. Well, that's good at least. <laughs>